Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Sharita. Welcome. If you are a returning viewer, thank you guys so much for all the love and the continued support of this channel. Today's video is all about spring fragrances. Yes, honey, spring has sprung and who else out there is excited to get into the fruity, the floral, the musk, the, I mean, just spring vibes, okay? Today's video will feature niche, my top 10 niche spring fragrances, okay, you guys? And so without further ado, let's jump right into my top 10 spring fragrances niche edition. All right, you guys, so before we get started, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Please join my wonderful YouTube family. Make sure that notification bell is turned on. And if you find any value in the content, be sure to give the video a big thumbs up as it absolutely helps my channel to grow. So the first fragrance on this list is by the House of Kriegler, and that is going to be Charming California 215. This is such a beauty. Anything from this house is just going to be a step above. I'm telling you, this scent, it is the most juicy, delicious, fruity floral. It's aromatic and it's green. Now the green note in here is not one to fear. It's a green tea note. So it's not gonna be anything too challenging in my opinion but I just feel like, oh my God, this is fruity, but it's not the typical fruity floral because it's not like that super sweet candied type of fruit that we're used to. This smells like fresh fruit. Oh my gosh. But you've got these woody uh, notes that come in there and just really help to give it a little bit of complexity, a little bit of depth. This is going to be the daytime scent for spring. I'm telling you, it is beautiful. I feel this is almost like sunshine, a basket of fruits, and you know, a little bit of rose, a little bit of orange blossom, lily of the valley. It's feminine leaning in my opinion, though I can see a man pulling this off. But this one, you wear this when the sun is out, the breeze is flowing. I mean, when you hear like California, that is what this really does. Like this is the epitome of California. They bottled up California and put it in, you know, this fragrance. And I feel like if you have not experienced anything from the Krieger house, definitely get your nose on um, some of their fragrances. And this is one I highly recommend trying because like I said, it's a very realistic, beautiful, Fruity floral, but with a very like slight green touch. Absolutely beautiful. And that is Charming California 215 by the House of Kriegler. All right, you guys. So the next one up on this list is by the House of Tiziana Terenzi. Honey, when I tell you nobody does fruity floral like Tiziana Terenzi, I mean, nobody does fruity florals like that house. Orza is just speechless okay can't even get my words together orza is magnificent it is super sweet so if you're the type that if a fragrance is too sweet it's like inducing headache you might want to try this before you buy it i feel like this is not anything challenging at all but it's very sweet so if you're you know one of those type of people that have a nose where too sweet can give you a headache. This is one you don't wanna blind buy. But as far as the scent itself, I think this is so delicious. This is an abundance of fruit, okay? You got just, I can't even name all the fruits. I'm gonna list them. But you have so many beautiful fruity notes in here, but it is dripping with caramel, musk, and vanilla. I mean, how much more delicious can you get? So for me, this is a special occasion fruity floral. So you're going to be in Maldives. That's, that's great. 
this is when you go to bring out your orsa. You are, you know, having a beautiful dinner date on a beach. This is when you bring out your orsa. This is not one you're gonna to wear to work. You could, I mean, the scent itself, but it is just something so opulent and special and amazing and just scrumptious about this fragrance. It is to die for. I am obsessed and probably one of my favorite fruity florals of all time. Again, that is Orza by the house of Tiziana Terenzi. Okay, you guys, next up on the list is going to be Musk Therapy, and this is from the house of Initio. This fragrance, I just can't stop spraying. It took a moment for it to grow on me. I never disliked it, but um, it wasn't a love, and I think I'm officially in love. <laughs> so, this musk is not animalic. This is a very clean musk, but it's powdery. It has a, a black current note, okay? And that black current is going to take you throughout the life of this fragrance. And I feel like for it to be such a heavy musk, accented with these beautiful citruses at the top, the black currant, it's just a must for springtime. You know, you wanna smell clean, but you wanna smell like spring. Um, you don't wanna be doing too much. Like this is the one that, that you're gonna pull for. This to me is that out of the shower, I feel like you can wear this to the gym. You can wear this to work. You can wear this when you're just going about your day. It is so beautiful. This fragrance has, you know, amazing longevity, sillage, for me, this is a very smooth, elevated musk, and I just can't get enough of it. It is perfectly unisex in my opinion, but it's slightly sweet. So something about that sweetness with the black currant, it makes it lean just slightly feminine. I mean, this is one you definitely would want to, to test out because I think a man could absolutely pull this off. This is actually the first one um, that I have from this house and I am thoroughly enjoying it. Like I said, just a slightly fruity, beautifully done musk and one that will probably be in super heavy rotation for spring and summer. Absolutely beautiful. Again, that is Musk Therapy by Inicio. All right, so this next one is also from the house of Tiziana Terenzi. This is Draco, and like I said, no one quite does a fruity floral like this house. Now, this one is, for me, a very dressed up, opulent, fruity, floral, musky scent. Very, very feminine. This is super powdery, very girly, but there's such an elegance and sophistication to this one. This one could absolutely be someone's signature scent. Um, the fruits in here, just divine. But there's also a very prominent vanilla. So you're just going to smell pretty much like heaven. This is heaven in a bottle. It is so enveloping. And I feel like the musk in here is just a little bit easier to digest. Um, you know, compared to the musk and like a Tibet or some of their more stronger musky scents. This one, like I said, is a musky one, but it's powdery musky. And so Draco, in my opinion, definitely has that Tiziana Terenzi DNA. So you have to like the way they do musk for a lot of the fruity florals. And I feel like if you're on board with the way that musk smells, you're going to probably like every fruity floral, you know, that they offer because it is, you know, it's very prominent. It's like I said, it's just something about the way they do musk that I particularly enjoy. Others may not, just like um, I think Narciso Rodriguez, either you, you know, you love the way he does musk or you just really can't get with it. The way he does musk is not really my vibe and I totally, you know, you know, I get it. <laughs> like some people say the same thing about this house, but Tiziana Terenzi is a beautiful niche house. It is worth every penny, extra de parfum. So you're going to wear these scents all day. Beautiful sillage, wonderful performance, amazing projection, 
can't ask for, you know, better fruity florals. And this is just one to have. And that is again, Draco by the house of Tiziana Terenzi. All right, you guys, so the next one is actually going to be my scents of the day, and that is Oud Orange Tint, and that is by the House of Fragrance Dubois. <sighs> you guys, this is going to be your date night fruity floral. This one is going to be so amazing for the spring time. It is sweet. This one is actually quite heavy on the vanilla, but it's so rich and creamy because it's got a coconut note and once you get down to the base you have another dose of vanilla you have a very smooth beautiful musk but not like one that's going to make it too powdery it's just beautifully done and then you have oud but like many of the ouds in this house it is so smooth it is so well blended it is not anything that's going to be um too overbearing too loud, too powerful. When I tell you the, the, the quality of these fragrances are just top tier. I mean, I smell delicious. It's, it's really hard to get a fruity floral that's gonna work for like, say a sexy date night, but I just feel like this one really hits it on the head because it's ambery fruity, okay? You've got this oud that comes in and it really just rounds everything out. It kind of tones down, you know, that bright, fruity, um, sunny effervescence, you know, that a, a springtime scent can have. So you're getting that spring vibe from all the fruits and the vanilla and the musk, but honey, that oud comes in and it just makes it something totally different. Oud orange, it doesn't have a prominent orange um, note, in my opinion, or a chord. You're just going to get fruits, but you don't know what kind of fruit. So you're going to get something that will, you know, work for daytime, evening. You can wear this day near anywhere. As long as it's springtime or summer, this can be worn anywhere. I feel like this is appropriate for work because the oud is not too loud. You can wear this on a brunch, you know, with your girls, but like I said, it's like this oody, coconut, fruity, vanilla, sensual almost type of scent. So one to definitely try from the house, one of my favorites. And again, that is Oud Orange Intense by Fragrance Dubois. Okay, so this next one on my list, oh my goodness, I'm just obsessed with it. My decan is almost gone and I have ordered my full bottle, honey. Creed's Aventus for her. Talk about a beautiful, fruity, woody scent. Honey, it's not overly complex, but there is a level of complexity to this that I just feel like it's so bossy to me. This is a bossy, fruity floral. This is one that is signature scent worthy, but I just see a very powerful woman wearing this. It's perfect for spring because it's fruity. It is so well done. This one is one I just feel like belongs in every woman's collection, for sure. It's very feminine. Um, it's a compliment getter. The performance on this, it, it this is what's gonna make it worth that price point. It lasts all day. It's not going to, you know, turn into a skin set four hours from when you put it on. It doesn't do that at all. This one is just one you need to try. I feel like, is it say flying by? No, and I'm gonna say that because the woody essence of this can really make it just a little hair masculine. Even though it's creative and it's for her, there are quite a few scents in that in that house where they're made for women, marketed towards women, but there are little accords and nuances about it that can make it just be a little bit too masculine for some feminine taste. But if you're able to try it, definitely try it because I really do think that you will enjoy it. Again, this is your all white party, honey. 
this is you know dressed up for work you wear you know stilettos to work you wear a suit you are just bold powerful but feminine definitely going to be heavy in rotation for both spring and summer again that is creed aventus for her all right you guys and the next one it really needs no introduction this is Delina, the original. Now for the winter and the fall, I kind of took the original away and I focused more on the exclusive. But because it's heating up, it's time to bring out the one that just hits us with that rhubarb and that lychee. I love that about this fragrance. And I do prefer this one over the exclusive. I feel like there's just something really special about this rose fragrance. This is so beastly <laughs> this is very girly and feminine but it is a beast this one performs you will smell this for many many hours to come at the end of a long work day it is still going to be projecting you're still going to smell it on your skin prominently and everyone around you is going to get a taste of this beautiful pink powerhouse so delina is so creamy, it's incense-y, it's tart in the opening, but I feel like that rhubarb, that tart note, it definitely kind of dies down a little bit. And I find that if you still want to enjoy the scent and you feel like the tartness is just a hair too much, layer it with the exclusive or even try layering it with um, just like a basic vanilla scent. Like uh, Vanilla 28 by Kelly layers beautifully with this. It tones down the tartness, but you're still going to get that whole Delina experience. I think this is worth the price, worth the hype, and must try, must buy <laughs> for your collection. If you can get, you know, if you're, like I said, if you're with that rhubarb and that lychee, you're gonna love this one. So Delina is going to be your date night. Delina is one you can wear to work. Delina is just versatile. She is beautiful, stunning, all of the things. That is what I think about this fragrance and it's one of my top, will always be in my collection for life, top 10, holy grail, and all of that, okay? Again, that is Delina, the original EDP by Parfums de Marley. All right, you guys, so the next one on this list is actually going to be a combination. And when I tell you this is money magic, okay? This, these, these are both two niche fragrances. I have Sublime Vanille in one hand and I have Balder Freak in the other. So Balder Freak by the House of Byredo is unisex. However, the vetiver in here can make it feel just a, just a touch leaning masculine for some women in my opinion but overall what you're getting are these beautiful um not everyday florals okay so you've got this african orange flower which is somewhat like a orange blossom but then you've got um several other florals in there that just are not commonplace in the fragrance world and it's citrusy, okay? But you've got these very aromatic round edges like that. This is not gonna be that super bright sparkling type of citrus. It's a very beautiful citrus, but I feel like it's just different. It hits different and it's hyped up, but I do understand the hype behind this. Now, when I really wanna feel like wearing this, but I want to take it and Pull it just a little bit more feminine. That is where the this beautiful Creed Sublime of a knee is going to come in because this one, it's actually quite, Lord, it's beautiful. It is heavy on the vanilla. It is airy, it is citrusy, it's feminine. And when you combine these two, you're going to smell absolutely beautiful a very unique citrus is what you're gonna smell like and very rich very opulent very you know just beyond anything that your average designer or even your niche 
citrus is going to give you when you pair these together so if you've got you know a date night you have on a beautiful flowy maxi dress you are you know faces beat hair is done and you're about to go out day or night really try this combination because it's versatile it's beautiful and it is stunning and that is again a layering combination of Barreto's Abada Freak with Creed Sublime Vanille. Match made in heaven. All right, you guys, and the last one on this niche list is going to be by the house of Nishane, and that is 100 Silent Ways. This fragrance has grown on me so much. When I first got it, I wasn't sure. It was never a dislike. It's always been very beautiful to me, but I was trying to like understand the hype because it's very hyped up. <laughs> Um, and I totally get it now. It is, it's very sweet. There's this peachy, mandarin, fruity, white floral. And this is going to be a white floral that does not scream white floral. The fact that it has tuberose in it and jasmine and gardenia, like do not let that scare you away because what you're gonna get from this is a whole lot more fruit than white floral. This is so delicious, it's juicy, it's so creamy, it's so sweet, it's so feminine. And I feel like a guy would just love to smell this on you. This is a fruity floral that's got enough going on in it, okay, enough, um, enough, I don't know, enough layers <laughs> where you can wear this on a, a date night. You can wear this to, you know, just out about going about your day. You can wear this to a beautiful day party. Like this is going to be a must have fruity floral. Now, is it worth the price point? I don't know, because I feel like, I haven't smelled all the designer fragrances out there, but I feel like you could probably get something similar to this in the designer world because Nishane is quite pricey. Um, it's an X-ray, and so I feel like these do not just project out there, um, but they do last on your skin. They do last, people will be able to smell you, but um, I'm just not quite quite sure if it's worth paying full price for. Beautiful scent. If you can get this, you know, from a discounter or, you know, pre-loved, definitely worth it. I feel like it's beautiful. It is, like I said, it's so juicy. It's peach, tuberose, but not anything heady, nothing too um, mature. It's nothing like that. This one, I can see someone 20 years old wearing. And I can see someone 60 year, years old wearing. Um, perfect foodie floral for the springtime. I feel like it may be a little bit too sweet and heavy for the summer. So if you're going to get your nose on it or if you're going to blind buy it, I will go ahead and do it. This was a blind buy for me. Um, and I am happy with the purchase. <laughs> uh, like I said, I was kind of on the fence about some things at first, but I'm totally loving this fragrance. And that is 100 Silent Ways by Nishane. All right, you guys, so that is the video for today. That completes our top 10 spring niche edition. Don't forget to make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave me your top spring niche scents. And you know what? I've enjoyed this time, but I will catch you lovelies on the next one.